Hundreds of thousands of photos and tweets from marathon spectators helped investigators zero in on the suspects. KPBS reporter Susan Murphy joins me with more on how San Diego State's Viz Center and Homeland Security students got involved. Now, Susan, you've talked extensively this week with Eric Frost at the Viz Center. Tell us a little bit about him and the grad students there. Eric Frost is co-director of San Diego State University's Homeland Security Program. He's also director of the Viz Center. So what he does is he gathers massive amounts of data from photos and Twitter, and he creates these visualizations, three-dimensional visualizations. It's able to capture a scene second by second, and um, he says... People at Monday's Marathon, they analyze these, this data at lightning speed. Here's what he has to say about it. So there was an enormous effort in, quietly in the back end to, to identify people and take them off the suspect list. Um, and so that when they actually had a press conference, so when the FBI actually released him, it wasn't, oh, we think these are. It was like, these are the guys. You know, and, it, and, it was, and it was because of the massive amount of work in the back end. Now, he was talking about getting all of this and, and getting this information. Is that what we refer to as crowdsourcing? Well, crowdsourcing used to be tip lines. It used to be these um, television shows that asked the public to help solve investigations. Well, we're in a new era with social media. It kind of takes, takes it to a new level, um, Eric Frost explains. But here's this massive amount of data comes in. It's in an in organized way, and if it's organized, then you can do something with it. And, and, and so a common thought pattern is if you're crowdsourcing, so like in a disaster, have a people that are out there tell you what's going on. You then know what's going on, and what actually usually works the best is, is say, sort of the crowd, but now giving something back, and that's called crowd feeding. So he's talking about this crowd feeding, this crowdsourcing. It's this back and forth conversation. It's not just sending in a picture, but there's some drawbacks to that sort of two way conversation. Yeah, rumors can start. So there were about eight to 10 people who were wrongly labeled as suspicious. You know, uh, rumors can fly rapidly on Twitter. Well, um, most of them were photos of men with backpacks, of course. And some right, of the they were actually, they were actually, these men were actually. People were sending them saying, these might be the guys, right? Right, right. And, and then what happened? So some of them were even posted on media outlets. Um, but the positive thing is that most of these people were able to come forward and clear themselves with police. And it also helped investigators to narrow down the suspect list. Yeah, absolutely. So it can work both ways. It could be harmful if you're one of the rumor guys, but certainly helping police zero this in. Now, the Boston Marathon, like the San Diego Marathon, or any really public sporting event, has been known for quite a while as a uh, soft target. When you were talking to Frost, he was especially concerned about this now. How come? He says that now that it's happened and it worked, he fears that we've entered into a new era of terrorism. It will get mimicked over and over again uh, because people see, oh, that actually worked really well. And it was on camera and all these people were looking at it and this had the right effect. And so I'm going to now do the same thing. So, so it's like when the first people kid or uh, hijacked an airplane. Our, our world changed. And, and, and for sports events, absolutely, sports events are an extraordinary target. The teams are a target um, because that's the major asset that a team has. And how do you protect those people? Now, these soft targets that he's talking about have been known for some time, and, and there were certainly grad students that you talked with at the Viz Centers that are even studying sports security specifically. What did they have to say about what they've learned from this Boston Marathon uh, situation? Well, they've definitely learned a lot. They're going to be going back and studying, and they're continuing the investigation, compiling evidence through social media and photos. And they say that social media is now the best kind of forensic evidence because every photo and social media entry has a timestamp and a location and that data is invaluable. Well, we certainly know it helped on this case. Uh, you can see Susan Murphy's complete report on our website, kpbs.org. Uh, Susan Murphy, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.